I'm going to go ahead and turn off the visibility of the, uh, uh, the layout component because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into one of the analysis environments. Because I want to determine whether or not I can either play with different material. I want to know if this thing's going to hold up to the stresses. If somebody decides that they want to set something heavy down on this desk, I want to know right at the outset as to whether or not I have the right size um, frame members. So I'll go into the frame analysis tool and tell it that I want to create a new simulation. And this simulation is going to be a static analysis. So go ahead and choose OK. Now it's going to go through and it's going to turn these, uh, these frame elements into beam elements so that they're, they're very easy to calculate um, the stresses that are going to be applied to this. And I won't have to go through a meshing process as you would have to with finite element analysis, right? Well, straight away off the bat, I can see this arrow that's pointing out at me. That arrow indicates gravity, and gravity is pointing in the wrong direction. So we're going to go ahead and find our gravity in the browser and go ahead and edit that and change its direction to the Z direction. Pretty easy. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to, I want to tell Inventor where this thing is fixed to the ground. So I'll go ahead and add a fixed constraint. And I'll use my space bar to repeat the commands so that you know, I don't have to right click or anything like that. I'm a big fan of using the space bar for repeat last command. All right, so let's just go ahead and put a, uh, let's put a load on this thing. So we're going to go ahead and say, I want a continuous load on that beam. And we'll just call this, um, I don't know, 500 newtons, which is a little more than 100 pounds, right? Go ahead and say OK there. Go ahead and repeat the command. And we'll say 500 newtons there. And 500 newtons there. So 300 pounds we're going to put on this thing. And we're going to assume that it's going to be evenly distributed and, uh, and all that. And let's see if it's going to go ahead and hold up to the weight. So we'll hit simulate. And now we'll take a look at the displacement. Now, as you can see, this is really fast. And this is all in real time. There are no additional edits to it. But getting pretty significant displacement um, on this. So there's going to be a, a couple of things that I can do to possibly beef this up. So as you can see, I'm getting all the displacements over here on the right where I don't really have any additional supports. So let's go ahead real quick and make that change. There's a couple ways to make the change. Uh, of course, I'm going to go back into my frame layout because, again, I'm controlling this entire assembly through a single component. And what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start another sketch. And there's a, a number of ways that you can do this, guys. But uh, I'll just go ahead and choose the one that's, that's probably the quickest and easiest of them all, if you will. Um, go ahead and say finish sketch there. I'll start another sketch over here and use project geometry from one side to the other. And again, it's right on the midpoint. I'm going to finish that sketch. Go all the way up to the top. Go into the Design tab and insert my frame members. And then reanalyze. So I'll say I want two more components as a part of this frame structure. Go ahead and trim these to length. There we go. and go back into my frame analysis tool. And all I have to do here is say, you know what, uh, let's just go ahead and simulate. And now it's going to reanalyze and give me some feedback um, for, uh, for, this, for the displacement. Now, one of the things that I forgot to do um, was tell it that these are actual, actually fixed to the ground. These will also be ground support beam elements. Resimulate. That was a pretty quick and easy, timely mistake. Uh, but nevertheless, even the experts make mistakes. All right, so uh, we have significantly less displacement, uh, as you can see in this. And it, you know, it's adjusted. Um, let's just change that to actual displacement. We can go through and animate the results so you can see how that displacement kind of moves out. And uh, you know, maybe there's some areas where you want to change the material thickness um, and so forth. So. Uh, getting some great feedback right at the outset so I can go through and make you know the appropriate design decision. Maybe I want to change the, uh, uh, the material, if you, if you will, on that. That's really actually quite easy to do. Because if I take a look at the material properties here, you know, I want to try something different. I've got mild still in there, um, and I'm still getting a little bit of displacement. Um, maybe something that's going to be a little bit lighter. Maybe something like aluminum uh, will, uh, will work out. So, like I said, you know, it, it all depends on, you know, obviously aluminum isn't as strong as steel. I get that. Everybody's laughing at Rob. 
ha, ha, ha. But what I can do uh, is I can change the, uh, uh, the material here very quickly and easily to figure out, hey, you know, is, is something like aluminum going to work? It's not, it's receiving a direct force down, it's not receiving any shear. So, you know, what, what, what do we want to do? So let's change this to something like uh, aluminum. We'll go ahead and choose OK and run our simulation. This is one of those things where, you know, people say all the time, well, you're going to be faster in 3D. Well, what are you going to spend your time doing? Yeah, you know, we're going to, we're going to be a bit faster, but, you know, is 40 millimeters uh, of displacement, 4 centimeters of displacement acceptable? Probably not. But at least I was able to figure that out within a matter of seconds. Um, and uh, uh, that way I can, I can decide, well, you know, I can, I can save a little bit of money if maybe I beef up the, uh, um, the size of the beam elements themselves um, rather than changing out materials and, uh, and, and so forth. So being able to have access to the tools that will help you make the best design decision, that's when you'll really start to see the advantages of utilizing Autodesk Inventor in an engineering environment. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about your uh, documenting your 3D designs in 2D, and we're going to send you on your way. Um, there's a heck of a lot of, uh, of additional tutorials that uh, you know I would definitely suggest taking advantage of. But uh, before I let you go, I'm going to talk a little bit about documenting your 3D designs in 2D using either IDWs or DWGs, and then we'll call it a day. You can get on with your 30-day free trial. See you next time.